Hi, my name is Clayton Fisher and I'm a clinical audiologist and today I'm going to show you how to fit hearing aids using real ear measurement. In my last video I talked a little bit about the ethics of not verifying hearing aids and, and wondering to myself if it was unethical to deprive clients of audibility that you could be giving them. And it turns out that there's actually an article on that. Catherine Palmer uh, published something in 2009 in Audiology Today that talks about exactly that, the, uh, the ethics of, of not following best practices and not verifying your hearing aid fittings. So pull it up and check it out. So basically my goal when fitting a set of hearing aids is to ensure that the client is getting an adequate improvement in audibility and I'm optimizing audibility in any way that I can. Obviously, audibility isn't everything, but let's face it, it's almost everything. Uh, our patient today is Carl. Um, Carl is an audiology simulator and um, he's also a Stones fan. Um, so he's got uh, sort of age-related, possibly with a little bit of noise-induced hearing loss. We've got the VeriFit set up with an external speaker and external monitor. One of the nicest things about the VeriFit is that it itself is a standalone unit and, and you've got the, the screen right in front of the, the patient so that they can see what's going on. Um, but this is just a way, well, for you to see a little bit better, but also for your, your client to see a little bit better so that they can see how their hearing aids are helping them. So we're using the AudioScan NOAA module just to, to send the data over, and you can see that's Carl's audiogram there. Um, one thing that I like to do is just throw up uh, an unaided curve just so that we can see what is audible and what is not audible. Just a quick note on calibration. If, if it is set to open, what happens is it calibrates once at the very beginning, and you gotta make sure that when you calibrate, either you don't have the hearing aids in or the hearing aids are muted. And then you have to have your patient stay there and not move for the rest of the measurements, okay? If it's set to a, 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 a occluding, what happens is it calibrates before each measurement um, so the patient can kind of move around a little bit in between measurements. The VeriFit's really good because it uses that, that stored calibration um, either just before the measurement or at the beginning for all the measurements. Um, you got to be careful if you're not using a VeriFit, if you've got uh, some sort of a computer-based system, that it's not using a concurrent calibration, um, where if the patient moves back, it increases the output. That, you can sometimes run, in, run into trouble there, uh, especially with an open fitting. So if I were you, if you've got a, a different system, I would just set it to open all the time and just, just tell the patient not to move. Let's have a peek at some of the fitting details. Uh, if we click here on audiometry, um, we've got our, our target set, so in this case, desired sensation level adult. Um, HL transducer input, in, insert plus foam. RACD, so I'm using the DSL average, um, and because Carl, by definition, uh, his, his ears are an, anatomically average, so I'm not too worried about measuring an RACD. If you don't know why you would measure an RACD or how it might help you, um, I wouldn't let that stop you from running real ear measurements. Um, if, if you got an average ear, there's a reason why we have those averages and it's because they're pretty close, so just go ahead and that's what I'm doing in this case. Uh, and I'm just gonna click to binaural because we're doing a binaural fitting. I've got Carl rigged up with the probe modules and I've actually inserted the probe tubes into his ears. Um, I'm just going to take a quick look in his ear to make sure um, that I've got that just sort of parked right on the ridge that, that goes down to the uh, tympanic membrane. That's looking good, but there is a way that I can check it. So the VeriFit 2 has the probe guide and you can just run a quick run just to see that you've got it in the right place. If you wanted to too, you could even use this to sort of do it blindly, um, but I always like to just put it in the way I've always done it, get in the right spot and just make sure that everything looks good here. So if I just go ahead and start a curve, it's gonna pull up the equalization right away. I'm gonna be quiet, kind of keep away from the client and, and tell them to be quiet and look straight ahead. We've equalized and once we've done that, if we, if we click here, it's gonna start the measurement. Um, I got my hearing aids kind of just best fit and ready to go. So I'll insert these here. If 
what I like to do is just, just run a quick curve of the best fit just to see where it's at, how good it is, uh, how bad it is. So why don't we try that right now? When we just ran the aided curve for average speech for the best fit using the DSL algorithm in the manufacturer's software, there's actually a surprisingly low improvement in aided audibility, okay? If we look at the unaided uh, estimate, it's uh, 74 to 78, so only four points. And then, um, so we get about eight points on, on the other side. So what that's telling us is that the hearing aids are helping, but only a little bit. One really nice thing about the VeriFit is that they're gonna give you an average unaided curve um, for, for each level of speech. And, and what that allows you to do is look at the difference between unaided and aided to make sure that you're seeing a nice improvement there. If you're using another system, maybe one of the less expensive computer-based systems, they don't always give you that. And so what I would encourage you to do before you start is just run a quick unaided curve at 65 just so you have that number the unaided SII number. So just a quick note on running an unaided curve. Sometimes it, it can be desirable to do so, even though the VeriFit gives you an average, um, especially if you're gonna go ahead and block off the ear for some reason. Let's say you got a, someone who should be fit with an open fit hearing aid, but they wanna go with a closed fit like a CIC. You really wanna make sure you know exactly what's happening in the ear canal before you go and, and block it up so that you can match the response. So what do we need to do? We need to get into the manufacturer software and start making adjustments because in Carl's ear, um, with this hearing loss, uh, we can do a lot better for him. And what we're going to do is make adjustments to get Carl's aided response a little bit closer to these targets, particularly in the high frequencies here, especially uh, at, at 4K. You can now take a curve that you just ran and then relegate it sort of to the background for comparison for later. So you just set as a comparison curve and then we'll be able to see the differences that have been made. All right, so I've gone back in and made some more adjustments. I can see that we've really boosted things up from the comparison curve in the background. And I can just throw up the uh, estimated unaided and we can see that from that average line in the middle, there's really a nice deviation with the aided response. But one thing, of course, that you need to keep in mind is what your patient is thinking. So we can't just do these adjustments without asking them how they're hearing things and how things are sounding to them. We have to consider their loudness perception. It's very important to use a scale to give them a reference point um, to gauge the loudness perceptions. You know, for most first time hearing aid users with a standard sloping loss, really you wanna you know, try and improve audibility as much as you can. And when you do so, they're probably gonna find that speech is comfortable, but slightly loud. Because let's face it, if it was just comfortable, um, they're probably not optimizing their audibility. In fact, if we muted the hearing aids and said, hey Carl, how does that sound? He'd probably say it sounds perfect, right? With those adjustments that we've made, um, we're certainly not right on target. You know, we're under target a little bit of a, a, at 4,000 Hertz. Um, but what we can see is that with the aided SII here, this is called an autobar, you, we've now got these vertical lines which shows you for, for a DSL fitting, you know, where 95% of well-fitted hearing aids would fit into. And what we can feel good about is that we've pushed Carl up as a first time fitting just to the bottom of that range. Um, and what we can tell him as we're counseling him is over time we can try and match his prescriptive targets a little bit better to improve audibility over the months and over the years. What I like to look at specifically is the difference between the unaided and the aided so I can see what the percentage change is. And in Carl's case here with this hearing loss, we got him 10 points on the right side, which is his slightly better ear. And we've got him 15 points uh, on, on the left side. Just from doing a ton of fittings over time, I created a little bit of a, like a cheat sheet. So on the other side of this, I've got what I call the EBA or expected benefits with amplification. Um, and it just, it just shows you, if you do that quick calculation, aided minus unaided, um, 
and you look at that difference, what sort of benefit might you expect the patient to have for like a standard sloping loss like this? And so we've got him, you know, a fair improvement in audibility, you know, 10 to 14 points. And I know that that's good. He's going to see a noticeable improvement. Obviously, it depends on, on, on the patient and their listening needs, but we can feel pretty good about that. What I love so much about the VeriFit and SpeechMap is that it's really a way to help the client understand how their hearing aids help them and why they're wearing hearing aids. So what I would probably tell the patient, I would say, well, look, Carl, um, you can see that this gray area that falls beneath the red and the blue lines is the information that you are missing. And I would say that now that we've amplified, you can see that a lot more of that is falling above the red and the blue lines, meaning it's audible to you. And of course, patients love to get percentages about their hearing, and so I would tell him what his unaided percentage is and what his aided percentage is, and I would tell him that that difference might seem small to him, but it's gonna be a noticeable difference for him. Um, I'd probably tell him that we're not meeting his full prescription right now because he'd find it a little bit too harsh, and we'll do that over time. So at this point in time, it's probably a good idea to actually just take a step back and run a quick MPO to make sure that the maximum power output is tolerable for the client and, and not exceeding um, his loudness discomfort levels or not exceedingly low. Um, so we're just gonna do that now because if there is something significant that we need to change, we wanna get that out of the way pretty early in the fitting because it will affect you know, the average curve or it, it could affect it. As this runs, I, I would probably be keeping an eye on Carl just to see if his eyebrows are going like this, as you know, most people do, especially as it gets right into the ear canal resonance uh, on an open fitting. And so what I would do, um, because, I mean, we're pretty close to these targets here, but I would probably just cool this down for him a little bit here. These are DSL predicted uh, loudness discomfort levels. Um, and, and certainly you can measure them. It's, it's, it's a good idea to measure them just in the same way that running you know, an RECD on everyone, it's always better to have measured as opposed to predicted. But again, you don't want that, that to be a barrier. We have predicted for a reason. It's probably reasonably close. Typically what I'll do is just put on a different passage and that can be a good gauge for the patient to see if at that soft level, which is always gonna be softer than they'd like to have it, can they actually follow that? And I'm of course looking at our roadmap, which is you know, the targets to make sure that we're you know, not way under them for softer or way over. So let's do a quick run there. But this is looking pretty good. And of course we can look at the difference between um, unaided and aided uh, for, for soft speech as well. And we're seeing about a nine point boost on the left side here. I'm fine with that. We're a little bit under here. We could work to get that over, up over time. The last thing you might wanna do is, is run loud speech to, to get an idea of what that's looking like. I don't run it all the time, but let's do a quick run right now and see what it looks like. For loud speech with Carl, uh, he said that it was loud, but okay. It wasn't uh, uncomfortably loud. Um, we're pretty much, you know, right on targets there. Of course, we could we could scale that down a little bit for him. The only thing with that is we do want to make sure we're keeping an eye on the compression ratio there. We don't want to bring it down too too much. When you're making adjustments in the software, um, it's important to to consider that the simulated curves are just simulated curves. So you don't need to worry or get anxious if your if your gain curves are way over the simulated targets because that's not what matters. What matters is what's happening in your patient's ear. So we're gonna to wanna to send this back over um, to, to Noah to be able to reference for later. Um, and we're also gonna make sure we, we print that out to PDF and that'll go right into our office management system. Real or measurements really isn't all that scary. Essentially what you're doing is putting a probe tube in the client's ear. You're making sure you got your calibration right and then you're checking to see if the hearing aids are improving audibility and to what degree, okay? You're having a look at the unaided, you're having a look at the aided, and you're making sure that you feel comfortable with that. And of course, you're making sure that the client feels comfortable with the level as, as they leave your office. Most importantly though, what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you as a clinician um, are doing things to improve the fitting, to improve audibility by making adjustments to, to your targets, getting a little bit closer there, or taking things down to make sure that, that the response is comfortable for the client.
get to it. If you're not verifying, let's start right now.